Uh, thank you very much, Mariama. I uh, arrived on 11th uh, last month, and uh, and I was able to meet the the, the president, uh, President Obama, on 23rd uh, of last month. Uh, and the meeting went on well. The president received me cordially. He expressed his willingness to work uh, with me and President Salva Kiir to achieve peace in South Sudan. Uh, one uh, important message that he gave me uh, to relate to my leadership in South Sudan is that South Sudan has seen a lot of destruction and bloodshed and therefore the leaders of South Sudan uh, have to rise above the issues and uh, reach peace uh, in the nearest possible time. Uh, I also uh, relate to the President Obama, the willingness of uh, my president, Salva Kiir Mayadid, uh, to resolve this issue of, uh, of fighting in South Sudan and to reach peace uh, agreement uh, as soon as uh, possible. Well, speaking of the peace agreements, uh, all eyes are on uh, Ethiopia, on the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, uh, with the peace talks taking place. We know that the two leaders have met, uh, but no agreement yet. Uh, what are you hearing and do you think uh, a peace deal will be signed? Yeah, we are still uh, in the specified time in, uh, in which to sign peace agreement. Uh, so uh, up to this moment, uh, there are still sticking issues uh, and the two leaders uh, uh, were meeting to the late hours uh, to try to resolve the, the, these issues. And hopefully uh, before the, the fifth, uh, the, 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 the people of South Sudan will receive the news that peace has been agreed in, in Addis Ababa. What do you think right now is the biggest hurdle? Because I know that there are a lot of issues, and I'm just going to uh, go through them real quick. Issues like government structures, uh, power sharing uh, percentage, army coexistence, or recomposition of the National Assembly. Is it one issue that they're not agreeing on, or is it all the issues about? I think there, uh, there has been a progress that has been made on uh, different uh, fronts, especially on the economic fronts. Uh, but now there, it remains the issues uh, that are in the governance uh, area. And the government, uh, led by the President Salva Kiir, has uh, given uh, a lot of concessions in these areas. Uh, the rebels uh, side is putting uh, very difficult uh, uh, conditions on, on, on the government. From the government side, we think that the issue of the two arms can be discussed and we can reach agreement. But secondly, the, the, the issue of the vice president, I think uh, Riyak Mashar was a vice president uh, before he left, before he tried to make a coup. So uh, our uh, position and the position of the president has been that uh, he is uh, comfortable by having two vice presidents with equal powers. Uh, the, the, with the parliament issue, we think that it is an elected parliament, therefore nobody has power to dissolve it. Uh, what the, the government can do is to enlarge the, the, the parliament in order to incorporate uh, the, 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 the rebels and, 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 uh, and other groups. Well, there's another issue where people talk about that um, there have been a lot of peace deals and that have not been respected. And uh, even if there is a peace deal that comes out of these talks uh, between Riyadh Machar and Salva Kiir, uh, the problems go deeper in South Sudan, that there's a lot of division between uh, so many different groups. What kind of mechanism do you think are being set up by the government right now for some kind of a reconciliation between uh, the, the South Sudanese people? First of all is to reach agreement and, uh, and to trust each other because they are the parties that will be in charge with the implementation of the agreement. Secondly, there will be a mechanism be it a regional mechanism or international mechanism to monitor the compliance of the two parties uh, or any other party to the uh, agreement. The issues of reconciliation will come when the peace is signed because you cannot reconcile people when they are still fighting. Calm the situation down and then talk about the reconciliation. The government is ready to sponsor the reconciliation. The government is ready to participate in the reconciliation process. And we had that experience. We committed ourselves to the CPA and that's why we did not go back to war with Sudan because we were committed to, to agreements that we, we signed. It is the rebels that we thought that they would be committed to the agreement because there are a lot of splintering gr groups that are coming out of the rebels. And the rebels need to unify their, their, their ranks and their forces so that they, they are a formidable force to, to negotiate with one voice with the government, which is now standing un unified, solid, negotiating peace with the rebels. If an agreement doesn't come out of the peace talks, is there a plan B? What's next for South Sudan? 
the plan B that we would like to, to, to initiate as a government is to continue in the peace process, continue to implement the agreements that have been signed, continue to abide by the ceasefire agreements that have be, been signed. This is the plan B. But uh, to go back to plan B that will destroy South Sudan more, displace people more, misuse the resources more, that is not a good plan B. But we cannot read the, 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 the minds of the rebels what their plan Bs are. We've just heard about uh, possible sanctions uh, from the United Nations, and I actually uh, want to get your reaction, um, you know, just about the adoption of this resolution. Uh, we are very, very disappointed as a government. We are very dismayed by these uh, uh, sanctions because we think that uh, sanctions will not resolve uh, any problem in, 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 in South Sudan. And instead, it will aggravate uh, the situation more. Uh, also, sanctions will send a wrong signal uh, to the rebels that, that there is somebody somewhere that is holding the hands and the legs of the government and they are allowed to beat the government uh, uh, by, the, by, 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 any, by any means. We have tried uh, to talk and, and engage with the uh, uh, Americans the sp who are the sponsors of the sanctions to, to, to express our view that uh, sanctions will not solve any problem in South Sudan. In the state, keep engaging the parties as it used to do during the Naivasha uh, uh, agreement. And I think the United States has a moral uh, obligation to continue to support South Sudan, continue to support any peace and reconciliation in South Sudan. Because South Sudan is a brainchild of the United States and other friends in Europe and elsewhere in, in, in the world. That vote at the UN was a unanimous vote. So I guess it wasn't just the United States, it was also other, other parties who uh, want to kind of send a signal. Um, uh, let me ask you very quickly before I let you go about uh, a report. Recently UNICEF uh, talked about um, children being kidnapped in certain parts of um, South Sudan. And the organization says it's confident that the armed group which took the children is uh, from this uh, militia, the Shilak uh, militia, uh, under the control of Johnson Maloney, is usually aligned with uh, your government. What do you make of that? The government has uh, come out clearly and stated it is position that it will look into the matter and, 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 and resolve. There is no way that the government can abduct children because uh, thousands of millions of children are, 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 are under government uh, control uh, under government sponsors in, in the schools and the universities. How, would, how, why would the government go to any village and, and, and abduct children? So we, we, we think that as, as government, if it has been done by our uh, forces, we think that it is, it is, it is, uh, it is not a, a, a good action to be done and, 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 and I think the government can correct uh, the issue if it is on, uh, on its side. The difficulty it will, will be if it is on the rebel side because we don't know uh, who will the rebel will hold accountable uh, to such the uh, action. So it is an issue that needs to be investigated thoroughly, both by the government and the, 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 and the organizations such as UNICEF. We've been concentrated on the peace talks. We've talked about, um, you know, this uh, problem has been going on uh, for almost 15 months, and it has had a toll, uh, a huge toll, a humanitarian toll on the country. Uh, but the, on the other side, there's also economics, and how is it affecting uh, the South Sudanese economy? How does South Sudan uh, plan to bounce back? Yes, it, it has affected the, the, the South Sudan as a, as a country. It has affected the regions. Uh, the oil production has, 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 has not gone to zero, but it has uh, reduced. It has affected uh, trade between the countries. Uh, South Sudan used to, to, to export and earn uh, some hard currency. And some of the regions had access to the hard currency through uh, trade with, with South Sudan. Uh, even uh, the exports to South Sudan have dropped. A country like Uganda and Kenya used to export to South Sudan. Farmers there have, uh, have, uh, have suffered, in the, for instance, in, the, in those countries because their produce are there and no, there is no market for them. Even our, our development part partners, uh, like the Chinese, the Malaysians, who are producing the oil, they have also been affected because their investment is in danger if it has not reduced as well. So if you had the world in front of you today, what, what would you ask for? Peace, uh, the most precious thing that we need and everybody needs in, in, in the world, peace. Help us to bring peace this is the most important thing. Other things will be preconditioned upon peace. If the peace comes, people will go normal. With, the, with their life, they can produce, they can travel, they can give birth uh, peacefully. This is very, very important. So 
if the well is there washing, we got, what we need is help us to bring peace to South Sudan as soon as possible. Established a sanctions regime for South Sudan, but stopped short of imposing worldwide travel bans and asset freezes on officials in the conflict-torn country or an arms embargo. The unanimously adopted resolution drafted by the United States threatens to blacklist anyone undermining security or interfering with the peace process after March the 5th and April the 1st deadline set by the regional East African IGAD bloc. Having this resolution in place with realistic deadlines based on IGAD's milestones for resolving the crisis, we hope will improve IGAD's chances of success in reaching a credible and sustainable peace. We are enhancing EGAD's leverage in the negotiations by sending a very clear signal to those who continue to choose war over peace. You will be held to account now as we urge you to compromise, to reach an agreement, and later when you are considering whether to follow through on its terms. If, as is often said, the goal is not to target top leaders, but some middle-level individuals, more or less in a symbolic way, who may not be playing a pivotal role in the peace process, such a punishment may be an exercise in futility. On the other hand, punishing persons who are playing leading roles at this crucial juncture in the peace process could be counterproductive against the cause for peace. Joining us now via telephone is the editor of the South Sudan in Focus program for The Voice of America, John Tamza, who is in Addis Ababa. John, thank you so much for speaking with us again on Network Africa. John, can you hear me? Well, we'll reconnect with John Tanza in a moment, but for now, as the war on terror continues globally, Tunisian police killed two Islamist militants during clashes near the Algerian border, where the military has been targeted previously in ambushes. The fighting came after army and police launched a major operation this week to flush out militants from a base in the Shambi Mountains near Algeria. Last month, four Tunisian police were killed in a militant attack in the same central region of Katerine. With its transition to democracy complete after a 2011 uprising against autocratic leader Zin El Abidine Ben Ali, Tunisia's government is turning its attention to tackling economic reforms and also tightening security. Several militant groups emerged after 2011, including Ansar al-Sharia, which is listed as a terrorist organization by the United States and European officials. Additionally, more than 3,000 Tunisians have left to join the war in Syria and Iraq, and the government is concerned about the prospect of returning jihadi fighters. Well, we're still looking at the top story, that's the South Sudan crisis. And now we've just had um, a, a bite come in from the Voice of America. Now, days before deadline to once again reach a peace deal that would end 15 months of violence in Africa's newest country, the South Sudanese President Salva Kiir and the rebel leader Rik Mashar are meeting in the Ethiopian, Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. Now, to step up pressure on both parties, the United Nations Security Council has adopted a resolution to possibly impose sanctions if a deal is not reached by Thursday, March the 5th. As the world watches the situation eagerly and carefully, our colleague at The Voice of America, Mariama Diallo, has sat down with the South Sudan's newest ambassador to the United States, that's Garang Ding Akwong, for some insight on the talks taking place in the Ethiopian capital and his reaction to the UN resolution. If an agreement doesn't come out of the peace talks, is there a plan B? What's next for South Sudan? Well, the, 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 we, we, we don't know what is in the, the, in the rebels' minds. We cannot uh, read the rebels' minds. But we in South Sudan, as a government, we don't have a plan B that will destroy South Sudan. A plan B that would like to 
to, to initiate as a government. Yeah, my reaction to, to, the, to the sanctions resolu resolution that has been passed by the Security Council is negative, of course. Uh, we are very, very disappointed as a government. We are very dismayed by these uh, uh, sanctions because we think that uh, sanctions will not resolve uh, any problem in, 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 in South Sudan. Instead, it will aggravate uh, the situation more. Uh, also, sanctions will send a wrong signal uh, to the rebels that, that there is somebody somewhere that is holding the hands and the legs of the government and they are allowed to be the government uh, uh, by, the, by, 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 any, by any means that they, they have. Uh, we have tried uh, to talk and, and engage with the uh, Americans the sp who are the sponsors of the sanctions to, to, to express our view that uh, sanctions will not solve any problem in South Sudan. Instead, keep uh, engaging uh, the, the parties as it used to do during the, 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 during the, the, the Naivasha uh, uh, agreement. And I think the United States has a moral uh, obligation to continue to support South Sudan, continue to support any peace and reconciliation in South Sudan. Because South Sudan is a brainchild of the United States and other friends in Europe and elsewhere in, in, in the world. So we, we, are, we, we, we are not happy with the, with the sanctions. Uh, we will continue to, 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 to object to, to, to sanctions. Well, what is it signaling? I mean, yeah, I think there, uh, there has been a progress that has been made on uh, different uh, fronts, especially on the economic fronts. Uh, but now there, it remains the issues uh, that are in the governance uh, uh, area. And mainly you have mentioned the issue of power, power sharing, the structure of the government and the army issue. And the government uh, led by the President Salfakiri has uh, given uh, a lot of concessions in these areas. Uh, the rebels uh, side is putting uh, very difficult uh, uh, conditions on, on, on the government. Uh, which we need to discuss thoroughly. Uh, first of all, the, the need uh, standing two arms during the, the, the two years of transitional period. Uh, secondly, the need the power sharing of the cabinet, 50-50. Uh, 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 third, uh, then they, they, they want the, the position of the first vice president. From the government side, we think that the, 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 the issue of the, the two arms uh, can be can be discussed. We can reach agreement, but uh, two arms. It is too long. The, 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 the war inside for that long time. Then the, the forces will be entrenched in this posi in, in, in their positions. We think that a shorter period period in which to integrate the two arms will be preferable. The position of the president has been that uh, uh, he is uh, comfortable with have, uh, by having two vice presidents with equal powers. Uh, the, the, with the parliament issue, we think that it is an elected parliament, therefore nobody has power to dissolve it. Uh, what the, the government can do is to enlarge the, the, the parliament in order to incorporate uh, the, 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 the rebels and, 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 uh, and other groups in, in the new parliament. That was the um, the ambassador, the U.S. ambassador for South, South Sudan ambassador in the United States, and he was speaking to the voice of America's correspondent, Mariama Diallo. Thank you.